Bonjour à toutes et à tous, je suis content de vous retrouver pour une nouvelle vidéo autour de notre thème favori. Aujourd'hui, je suis avec Arjava Peter Sensei qui va nous parler des Gokai, les 5 préceptes du riz. Hi Arjava, hi. Hi Gauthier, happy to be here. Yeah, I'm happy to uh, be with you today. You're here in Paris to teach us Jigden Reiki, traditional Reiki. I'd like to ask you to talk a little bit about Gokai, you know? What are the Gokai? How could we apply that? The Gokai, or the five Reiki principles, are one of my favorite subjects in Reiki. They really are the only Reiki philosophy that we have. Reiki is not a religion. It's neither Buddhism, nor Shinto, nor Christianity, nor anything else. So Sui Sensei wanted that. It's not even a technique that whatever he... The way he transported his enlightenment, yeah, the way he wanted that for humanity. And on Sui Sensei's memorial it says, Reiki will heal the world and its people, I thought, a very bold statement in 1925, 26, 27, when it was erected there. So he must have had some vision of being able to help a lot of people. And we see that actually, miraculously, he really succeeded in that Reiki is being practiced all over the world by millions and millions of people of all cultures, all religions, all social status, all ages, everyone is doing Reiki. It's amazing. Yeah? So the basic Reiki philosophy, because it's not a religion, was something that Usui Sensei added, because he thought, okay, I got to give my people some kind of ethical backbone, something that will help them live a happy and contented life. Something simple, something that every one of us can do right now without having to change, without having to be something that we are not, but something that we can do as we are right now. And This teaching he called the Gokai, Go means five Kai, are principles, the five Lakey principles. Those are very simple uh, sentences that were part of the, in German there's a good word, Zeitgeist, the spirit of the times in which Usui Sensei, Sensei lived. So he took from common understanding of spirituality in the 1800s and 1900s. He took some components and put them together in a very clever way. The first one is Ikaluna. Ikaluna means don't angry. Uh, don't be angry. Shimpai Suna. Don't do worry, kanshaste, be grateful or be gratitude, gyo o hageme, do your duties or act responsibly, do whatever life is putting in front of you and give it all you got. And then hitoni shinsetsu ni, be kind to others. So those are the five Lakey principles, and they have a um, headline, which is kind of a declaration why Usui Sensei came up with exactly this, and he called that Shofuku no Hiho, Mambyo no Leiaku, the secret art of happiness, of inviting happiness into your life, bringing happiness into your life and the spiritual medicine for all ailments, and all ailments means of the body and the heart-mind. The principles begin with um, like a headline, and that headline is in Japanese Kyo dake wa, that means only today. The meaning of the word Kyo also means now, yeah? so only now. 
And that goes for all of the five following sentences. Only today, don't be angry. Only today, don't do worry, don't create worries in your life. Only today, be grateful. Only today, do your duties fully. Only today, be kind to others. So it's not asking us to change our life direction 180 degrees and stop all the things that we've been doing <laughs> until today being angry not being grateful worrying all the time but he says only now and right now as we speak let's say right now can you do it in this moment can you not be angry of course you can in this moment can you not worry while we are talking you and i of course you can at this moment. In this moment, can you be grateful? Can you feel gratitude in your heart? Of course you can. It's there. You just have to awaken it. Just have to access that feeling of gratitude and boom, it's there and takes over your being. Only today, do your duties fully. Do whatever you do fully. You are listening, let's say, at the moment, listening to me. Listen like you listen to the birds. I am talking and I don't think about anything other than talking to you. So I give my full attention to what's happening right now, only today, only now. And only today be kind to others. We don't know about tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow will be a pain in the neck. We will yell at somebody, <laughs> but only today we are kind. So, with this, these few words, kyo dake wa, he is taking all this incredible load of our shoulders and says, hey, we're not talking about eternity here, but now, just now. And if you can do it right now, you can do it in the next moment too. So each moment arises out of the previous. If I can do it now, I can do it in the next, in the next, in the next, and then before I know it, I have all of eternity happening here, right here in this moment. So the principles are not meant to be moral concepts like commandments, moral warnings that if you do this then ooh, all hell breaks loose so if you worry or if you're angry you go to reiki hell and reiki hell means you will have cold hands you will have no movement of energy coming out of your hands horrible place eh? all the reiki devils will be there waiting for you <laughs> so there is no place like that and the principles are not meant like that at all but they are meant to guide you to have a um, happy and contented life right here and right now. So the first two, anger and worry are perhaps the most common toxic materials that we entertain in our heart and mind. We all do. You do. I do. We all do. You know? we're, nobody's different. And when we entertain those guests, the anger, and we're talking not just your day-to-day -day anger, where something upset you, it flares up and then disappears quickly, but something that's persistently there, eating your soul, you know? that kind of anger we're talking about. or not the day-to-day -day worry where you worry about one of your friends or your your partner or something. That's normal. We're not talking about this, but we're talking about the worry that eats our heart eh? and makes us, in the long term, makes us sick. And Usui Sen said these two, the destructive anger and the destructive worry, don't do that to yourself. Stop it. Cut it out. And he's very kind, because he doesn't just say, hey, don't be angry, don't be sad. And you are wondering, <laughs> I'm how? How? <laughs> I'm trying. I've been trying my whole life to get a handle on this, on this feeling. And people usually, they tend more to one than to the other. So maybe I'm more 
of the worrying type and somebody else is more of the angry type. It's not better. It's the same. Eh? So we haven't found a way to deal with this. Usui Sensei was very compassionate, very kind and, and very clever in a good way, in the way that he understood human psychology well. He said, if you feel grateful, if you nourish an attitude of gratitude in your heart, anger and worry, poof, disappear. Because you can't be both angry and grateful at the same time. You can experiment with that at home. Check it out. Not possible. You cannot be worried and grateful at the same time. Either one. The gratitude is a, like really we find beautiful emotion and the more gratified emotions um, overrule, overrun the negative ones. This is something I know, Gautier, you're doing hypnotherapy. It's one of the principles that oh, is yeah, yeah. in hypnotherapy yeah, that yeah. the right. positive feeling wins. It's not Hollywood here where we don't know who will win, the good or the no, bad. No. Here, Hollywood. the positive yeah. always wins because it has much more impact on our body and our mind, yeah? everywhere. When you feel a positive something, boy, what a nice feeling. Yeah? And when you feel a negative feeling, ooh, what a suffering, how you hate it. Yeah? How horrible it is when you're angry and you catch yourself and you think, I wish I wasn't like that, you can't stop. And when you're feeling grateful or in love or or just happy, yeah? how nice that is, yeah? that feeling, just elevating, elevating you and all the people around you. So Usui Sensei says, this is the ticket. Nourish a feeling of gratitude or of love, of kindness, of compassion in your heart. doesn't really matter which one it is. In the Reiki principles, it's suggested to use Gratitude, which is one of those strong emotions, but any of the others would be okay, eh? like love, for example, or compassion. Nourish that in your heart and all the other things will just poof, vanish into thin air. You don't have to fight. You don't have to get the broom and say, oh, there's still a little bit of worry there, <laughs> like that. Nothing you need to do, just feel grateful and the point is not for a purpose, for an outcome, for a condition, but just for gratitude itself, for gratitude's sake. Just feel that. And I know that you, you guys who are viewing this, who are listening, you can do it and you can do it right now. Test it out. Feel it. Feel that gratitude in your heart. Maybe your chest opens up. You feel expansive, you're getting warm, yeah? something nice is happening in your heart. Yeah? How to do this? Do we have to think about good things we have in our life? You know, there is a lot of people that they have an apartment, but they're alone in their bed, they have a job, but they don't like their job, they have food, but they're so sad to eat in front of the TV, they have a TV, but they don't like to watch it. So. You, it can be it's for some of us some kind of um, mind stuff. So we just think of oh, I'm so happy to have things that don't make me happy. <laughs> you could, <laughs> so you how, could how start. Could you could start with the things that make you feel grateful. Yeah, if that helps. Eh? Okay, that's it's not a problem. But eventually, leave all those reasons behind because we want to learn to be independent of any outer circumstances. So we don't want to have conditions. If my condition is that I feel happy only every day, if I find 50 euro on the street, well, okay, in Paris, maybe I have a oh, chance. So gosh, many people, yeah. <laughs> eh? if I really pay attention, eh? but it's, it's not very convenient. Eh? So all the days that I don't find the money on the road, I'm unhappy. So I cannot afford to have conditions. So with time, learn 
to have unconditional love, love that doesn't, unconditional gratitude, that doesn't have any object whatsoever, it's just there in itself. And you can access that right now, just now. Test it out. There is gratitude in there somewhere. Maybe it's deep down, it's buried somewhere, but it's there. Let it come out. You feel it now. And then let that wash over you. Let it just take over. And then all the darkness, all the clouds suddenly disappear. Okay, they will come back. <laughs> A little bit later. Yeah? So then you do it again. That's the ticket. Then the fourth principle Gyo-hagime, that's really a typically Japanese concept to give, or I should say Asian concept, to give yourself fully to whatever you do. Whatever that is, whether you're cleaning the floor, or you're cooking, or you're teaching, or you're listening, or you're listening to music, or you're playing music, or whatever it is, you give yourself to it as fully as you can, and you will notice that when you do that, all actions become meditation, prayer, sweetness, uh, even cleaning the toilet, uh, cleaning the shit in your toilet. Yeah, <laughs> Don't be worried about the word, uh, and you can imagine what it looks like, uh, cleaning it. If you do it, you do it with love and with kindness and yeah, it's good. It's really good. It's an act of almost like a prayer. I don't want to be blasphemous, not at all. Eh? But you give that quality to all of your actions, a quality of awareness, of wakefulness, of love, of kindness. And then everything becomes beautiful. And once this is your practice, you are not really very angry, you don't worry too much, You are grateful just for gratitude's sake. You do what needs to be done fully. Right? Don't think about it, don't complain. Then, kind of your work is done. It doesn't mean enlightenment or anything like that. No, it's too big. Yeah? But kind of your, your spiritual work is done. The rest will come by itself. Yeah? And then start to share your happiness with others and let's be kind to others. In our case, yeah. go out and give them Reiki, do Reiki treatments. Those of you who teach, go out, teach people. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Ajara. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is this mm -hmm. work. So you're here in Paris for, for, for seven days and did around and uh, I follow Shodan, so I, I'm organizer, but also students. I repeat Chicken and Ricky, um, the whole class I already received. And the viewers, for me, it was very sweet to experience just be sitting here, not being a teacher. We are at my school, actually, but I was just part of the group, just I received a lot, and especially the Gokai teaching. I am supposed to teach, I am teaching many people but it was so good to taste them like it was the first time hearing this teaching this is we never finish this pass and it's so good to, to come back to the roots and we should never let them could I suggest that we say the Gokai yeah okay we can do and we can do it together with you yeah I will repeat them one at a time slowly and I give you time to repeat after me. So I will say Kyo Dakewa and then you repeat Kyo Dakewa. Then I say Ikaluna, you say Ikaluna, Shimpai Suna, Shimpai Suna, Kanshaste, Kanshaste, Gyo Hageme, Gyo Hageme, Hitoni Shinsetsuni. Shinsetsuni, we do it in a way that you can actually follow. Okay, so. Kyo dake wa. Kyo dake wa. Ikaruna. Ikaruna. Shinpai suna. 
Shin Pal Suna. Kansha Ste. Kansha Ste. Gyo O Hageme. Gyo O Hageme. Hitoni Shin Setsuni. Hitoni Shin Setsuni. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ajava. Thank you, the viewers. If you want to follow Ricky Glass with Ajava, just please click here or here down the video. <laughs> See you soon. Thank you so much. Bye bye. bye.